What's up, Brad fam? I feel like there's a lot of mythology and lore surrounding the idea of cycle touring. So in today's video, we are going to be debunking the top five myths surrounding cycle touring. All right, let's roll. Hello and welcome back to the Rad Bike Adventure, the place where we talk about all things cycle touring, bike packing, and bike lifestyle related. It's a lot of bikes. So if you're into that sort of thing, or you'd like to be, consider gently tapping that subscribe button. By the way, I'm Ryan, and I have cycle toured through 18 different countries, and I'm excited to share my knowledge and my experience with all of you. So today we are talking about the five biggest myths surrounding cycle touring. And one by one, we are going to deflate them. Pun intended. By the way, these myths are not in any particular order, so let's get into it. Myth number one, you have to be a super uber ultra athlete to be able to cycle tour. Now, I just think that is not true in any way. I have met all kinds of people cycle touring, some who haven't done any sort of athletic endeavor in a really long time, and they just thought, hey, this would be a really fun adventure. I think cycle touring is good for anyone because there's no rules about how far you have to go or how long your tour has to be. Your tour might be three nights and maybe you only go 10 miles every day. I have a few examples that I'd like to share with you. One of which is one of our Patreon supporters who is an amazing woman and she is currently cycling all around the roads of New Zealand. She's trying to do every single road in the country. And she actually has trouble walking. She has an undiagnosed condition and she carries a wheelchair in her trailer behind her. Now that to me is just incredible. It shows that really anyone can do it. And she goes about 20 to 40 kilometers a day. Another example would be a guy who stayed with us uh, in the Warm Showers Network. He had traveled just kind of backpacking around, met a guy with a bike and thought, that looks cool, I'm gonna try it. So bought a cheap bike at the market. I think he said it cost him $30 and he was traveling the world on that thing. He had no experience cycle touring. He really didn't even cycle at all. And he just thought, why not give it a try? So those are a couple examples I'd like you to take with you because you really don't have to be a super uber fit professional athlete to try to cycle tour. All you have to do is get on your bike and ride. Sure, you're carrying some weight, but you just go as far as you want. That's it. Myth number one, busted. Busted. All right, let's go on to myth number two, which is that you have to be really into bikes, right? I mean, it's bike touring, so you must have to already be into bikes to bike tour. Not true. Anybody can bicycle tour. This is kind of the theme of the first two myths, right? I really think that anyone can do it. You don't have to be into bikes. And kind of a two-parter to that myth would be that you have to know how to work on bikes, right? You have to be like a super mechanic and know all about your bike in order to bicycle tour because what are you gonna do if something happens? You have a lot of support in this world. Anywhere you go, there's probably someone who knows how to work on bikes or you can go to a bike shop. You can get a ride if you really get into trouble. If you're doing backcountry stuff like bike packing, I do think you need to have a little bit more of mechanical skill. But if you're bike touring on the road, especially in more populated places, then you definitely can get away with only knowing the basics, which I would advise you to learn. So even though I don't think you have to be super into bikes or know how to work on bikes, it is a good idea to educate yourself a little bit before you go on tour. I do hope to have a series in the future. Uh, when I do have it, I'll post some links up here that is going to be a beginner series with basic mechanics that you'd need to know when you go on tour. But you absolutely don't have to already be a bike obsessed person. I mean, I was commuting by bicycle. I was pretty into bikes, I have to admit for myself but almost everyone that my partner and I met on our tour was not that way. And they even told us, they're like, were you guys into bikes before you set off on your tour? And they're like, oh wow, you're the first people we've met that are actually like cyclists at home. Everyone else has just been, you know, looking for a new adventure and they thought, why not try cycle touring? So don't think that you already have to be into bikes or know all about bikes. It's an adventure, right? You get to learn as you go. So myth number two, busted. Okay, moving right along, let's get into myth number three, which is that you have to have a touring bike and you have to have a lot of expensive bike touring gear. Once again, not at all true. I did my first tour on a cheap hybrid bicycle. Uh, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of a combination of a mountain bike and a road bike. That's why it's called a hybrid bike. And they usually are a little bit cheaper than a touring bike. They're definitely not as robust, but hey, it lasted for my three month tour through the UK. 
and pretty much all of my gear was just like clothes that I already had and a bunch of stuff that I scoured out of my cousin's garage in Wales. I found like old panniers and I used like a fishing tackle bag to be my handlebar bag. You can get creative. You definitely don't have to have all the most expensive fancy gear. I've met plenty of people who just bought either a secondhand bike or just something super cheap and it worked. So for your first tour, don't think that you have to go all out, especially if you're not gonna be going for, you know, a two year epic journey or something like that. Obviously, if you're going to be going to remote places or you do plan to be gone for quite a long time, I think it does pay to invest in a nicer bike because it will serve you through the long run, but it definitely doesn't have to be, you know, like the gatekeeper to getting into cycle touring. You can just jump on the bike you already have and try your first overnight. Definitely don't need all the fancy gear. I would even argue that it's kind of nice to start with something like that because if it is something that you get into, then you can kind of upgrade and reward yourself for having this new hobby. And then you get really excited to have that really fancy touring bike or those fancy bike packing bags or the nice panniers. But really you can find a lot of stuff used online or check out your local co-op too. So myth number three, busted. busted. Four, number four. Myth number four is that it is expensive. Oh my gosh, you went on a bicycle tour? That must have cost you so much money. Once again, I am gonna prove this wrong. Bicycle travel is actually really cheap because if you look at your costs generally on a trip, one of the big ones is gonna be accommodation, but with bike touring, typically you're camping, not always. You can also utilize a warm showers or couch surfing network, and that's gonna save you money too. And your transport costs. Transport costs are huge on a trip. So when you're the transport, you actually save a lot of money and it's more fun, obviously. Unless you're going on a pre-packaged tour, those can be a little bit pricey for sure. Bicycle touring is actually really, really cheap. It's a cheap way to travel and you get to get fit as you go. So I think that is a huge perk of cycle touring. You feel good, you're saving money, saving the environment, you get to see way more. Okay, sorry, I'll stop going on and on about how much I love cycle touring. For sure, you can travel cheaply on a bike tour. So myth busted. Final myth, myth number five. Now maybe this is the one I actually hear the most, and that is, you're just crazy. It's crazy, cycle touring, that's crazy. That is way beyond anything I could do. There's no way I could possibly do that. It's just insane. This one could be a little tricky because you know everybody's different, but honestly, if you just go at the pace that you want to go at and you go as far as you would like, I think that cycle touring is not crazy at all. You don't have to do 100 mile days for 30 days in a row. Sure, there's people that do that, but your tour is your tour and you can go as far as you'd like or as short as you'd like. It really is up to you. My partner, Darren, who is also my travel companion, actually, if you wanna see our most recent trip, we vlogged the whole thing, so I'm gonna link that right up here. But she was actually like this, like, there's no way I could do that. And I was like, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. And she did, our first trip, she wasn't sure, but after about two days of riding, she was like, oh my God, this is incredible. I love this. I don't know what I was so scared of. It's literally just riding your bike. That's it. You just spend all day, as much as you want of it, really, riding your bike, hanging out, meeting locals, eating delicious food. The food tastes really good because you're super hungry, by the way. It's like your childhood dream. It's like you set off on your bike and you felt that feeling of freedom, but now as an adult, you just get to keep going. You get to bring a few along a few things that you packed with and go exploring. So to me, it is definitely not crazy. It is not insane. It's just the best way to travel. So myth number five, best. So now that you have heard the top five cycle touring myths. I am curious, have you ever bought into one of these myths and really believed that they were true? Let me know in the comments down below. I like interacting with you guys and the comments are one of the best places to do that. So shout it out down there so we can have a conversation. If you've made it this far, give us a thumbs up and tap that subscribe button. And if you haven't already today, you should go ride your bike. All right guys, we'll see you in the next one. Remember to rad on. Yeah. Struggle is real. Struggle is real. You don't even care, you're sleeping over there. Isn't this hat so cool? I ordered it on Etsy and it just arrived today. So I was like, perfect, I get to put it on for the video. Check that out. Don't check out my hair though, sorry about that. Wool and cotton, I believe. I'll link the store down below because I think this is super cool. He makes a lot of different caps. I am digging this hat.